It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. Now, today we got to talk about Normani, okay? She's got a new album finally coming. This thing has been long anticipated for quite some time. It feels like <clears throat> her situation with RCA has been very contentious. They've been holding her back for the greater part of at least five years, if I'm not mistaken. She's dropped a couple successful singles, had great appearances in the WAP video and other music videos that have come out. She's done modeling campaigns, all types of things. But for whatever reason, her career has just been on a start, stop and go type of basis ever since she decided to go solo from Fifth Harmony. Now, before we get into the actual story of what's going on, the new album and why she took a couple of breaks along the way. I got to bring it back to Miss Tia Kemp because the family keeps reaching out to me. Apparently, Miss Tia's mother is also not fighting drug addiction. They they said that uh, this is a story that Rick Ross put out there to try to, you know, absolve himself of any responsibility or try to make himself look better. So once again, I apologize for any misinformation that was spread out there about her mother. Of course, anytime you start talking about people's families, people get sensitive about it and they definitely want to make sure that the truth gets out there. They say that she is currently a school teacher, the mother that is, and that she is not battling addiction as per what Ross is saying. This will be the last time that I'm speaking on her mother in any kind of fashion. So for those of y'all that are tuned in and connected to that situation, my apologies, but this will be the last correction that I'm going to be offering in reference to that situation. Now, getting back into Miss Normani, okay? She came out about a week ago, well, a few days ago, and finally let the world know that her new album called Dopamine is coming out in 2024. Unfortunately, there is no release date as of yet. So, of course, all the fans out there, y'all are kind of stuck, still waiting in the wings, wondering what's going to happen, when music's going to drop, when singles are going to drop. I do believe that she was in a dispute with her label RCA about a song called uh, Candy Paint that she was extremely excited about. I think a snippet of Candy Paint has already leaked online. It was something that her fans were excited about, but they never received the full record. Um, so we don't know if that's still in the pipeline or if she's completely um, revamped the album top to bottom. But uh, we got this article here. It says the wait is almost over. Normani announced she'll be releasing her debut album, Dopamine, this year. She posted the album artwork on Instagram Wednesday, February 21st, which features the black leather bikini clad singer riding on top of a black rocket, which hopefully is nothing. Hopefully is an indication of nothing but upward and forward progression. She says crying type in this right now. Dopamine, the album. The announcement of her long-awaited first full-length project arrives after fans noticed the ex-Fifth Harmony member had cleared her Instagram. So about a day or two before this actual announcement went out, she completely wiped off everything that was on her Instagram. She did a complete hard reset, took off her profile photo and everything, which was a pretty clear indication that some sort of announcement was to come. She also reposted a June 30th, 2018 dated message from Twitter in which she wrote, I have my album title, y'all, and shared the album's pre-save link, uh, where's the damn album .com. Now, if you go to where's the damn album .com today, there's not much on there. It only has a pre-add or pre-save option. So you can pre-add the album on Apple Music currently through the website. You can also pre-save it on Spotify. They have a rolling date thing on there. It's, it's basically just a... It's just going through all the dates of the year of, of when it could possibly drop. There's no confirmed date. And we see that she's also still on RCA. There was a lot of people that were trying to lobby to get her off of the label. They felt like she was living through the RCA curse, which, I mean, if you get stuck in limbo for five years, you're definitely in a bad situation. And unfortunately, a lot of her buzz has died down. Even with this, even with this joyous album announcement, I feel like it should still have been bigger based on all of the hype that was surrounding Normani just a couple years ago. It's almost as if her career has been sabotaged. You know, hopefully this album can revive everything. Hopefully she could get some good energy, get some good features, get some high, high production music videos, get on some high profile tours that could kind of propel her and get her back into the public eye and get her back where she's supposed to be. But it makes absolutely no sense to snatch up an artist 
at the prime of their career coming off of a successful girl group go go solo put records out do this whole Timbaland and you know Aaliyah inspired thing with wild side and all that good shit get all this buzz going for her and then all of a sudden they just halt her progression that was like one of the worst things that could ever happen to an artist now Normani did come out and speak on a few things right like I said but well before I get there this announcement comes out exactly five years, seven months, and 22 days since Normani's tweet saying that she had the album title. So it's been five years, seven months, and 22 days since she became her own artist. She had her own album title, and she's just been waiting ever since. You know what I'm saying? Since launching her solo career in 2018, the musician has released only seven singles as a lead artist, including top 20 Billboard uh, Hot 100 hits such as the Sam Smith assisted Dancing with a Stranger that peaked at number seven, the Khalid duet Love Lies, which peaked at number nine, and then you've got Wild Side featuring Cardi B, which was the most culturally relevant song out of those, but that even they uh, that even tanked out at number 14. So she's got top 20 hits to, to, to back her up, but outside of those singles... We just don't have a lot of music to go off of. Not a lot of material, right? Just a lot of hype more than anything. Now, there is an article where Normani recalls pushing her music career back after both of her parents were diagnosed with cancer. So this is something that I was not aware about. And this story came out just a couple days ago on Friday. And um, during a February 22nd interview with Who, What, Where, Normani recalled what it was like to see her mother and father, Andrea, and Derek Hamilton privately began cancer treatments as the world awaited her debut album. She said the first thing she sh she thought to herself was, fuck all of this. This is bigger than the music. It's bigger than what I'm trying to accomplish. This is life or death. Excuse me. All I wanted to do was be there for them. In June 2023, Normani revealed her father had been diagnosed with cancer. One year after her mother, Andrea, battled for it this, for a second time, in a promotional collaboration she did with Bose. While speaking with Who, What, Where, Normani said her music has helped her parents out greatly. She says, honestly, music is what got them through the cancer treatments. I remember being on FaceTime with my mom while she was undergoing chemo and her asking me, how's the studio today? How's the, how's the music coming? As hard as it was for me not to be with them as much as I wanted to, ultimately, pushing through made the circumstances of the last few years feel a bit lighter for my parents. She added, it was in those moments with my parents that made me realize that I have an opportunity to make an impact in this lifetime. I know everything I've been through isn't in vain. There's always something that God wants me to see in the season. It's all in service of making me better for all that he actually has in store for me. On February 21st, Normani announced the title of her de debut solo album, Dopamine, as I already stated. And I believe that she also split ways with a, a former business associate or something like that within the last year as well in her interview with who what where nomani said this upcoming album is not just about music coming out it feels like a representation of everything i've gone through to get to this moment she also talked about her solo music career after fifth harmony and said that also helped her make dopamine she says i know i needed time experiences and spaces coming out of fifth harmony in order to become the version of myself i needed to be Without all of that, I would not be able to exist within the creative space that I am in now. She says, I would not be able to make this type of music that I'm making. Okay, so let me go to the Who, What, Where interview and see if there's anything else to be revealed. Okay. So. Boom. She says, I would not be able to exist within the creative space that I am not am. And now taking more time to create anything in a capitalist society that values output over quality is a challenge, especially within the context of the music industry, which is subject to the whims of the algorithms on social media and streaming services. Furthermore, they say the expectations placed upon her forthcoming debut solo album make it easier. What the hell, man? I don't care about this ad. Make it easy for fear to creep in, as she says. Normani knows well 
that being in the spotlight inevitably comes with self-doubt. She says, I end up having certain conversations with myself where I'm thinking, is what everybody is saying true? Did I miss my moment? Did I wait too long? Do they still care? In these moments, it's her biggest supporters that remind her that she is enough. No one can argue that Normani's fandom doesn't have complete faith in her, but the faith she has in her craft, her higher calling, and herself has not always been as steadfast. Okay? She says, growing up, I always felt like the other, so I put so much pressure on myself to be the absolute best that I could possibly be to be seen, heard, recognized, and acknowledged. Being a black woman, especially in the entertainment business, it requires one to perpetually live up to standards that they have not set for themselves. Slowly, Normani has come to realize those outside expectations. You, she, uh, she says, you could say I've been on a quest to be able to recognize that all that I am is actually enough. Right. Um, when speaking about industry expectations, she says, yes, absolutely. Everybody has an expected timeline. But I know that whenever I choose to release music is going to be worth it if for not only my fans, but for me, too. OK, so she's acknowledging wholeheartedly that she knows that it's been a long time coming. She hasn't released a lot of music. She's wondering herself if the people are still going to be waiting and caring and wanting to be there for this event the same way that they were before. But she's trying to be confident and she's trying to find ease in the fact that at least she's able to put it out and that somebody will be affected, right? So she says, music is me through and through. When I'm on stage, you can't tell me that I'm not home. It's just a part of who I am. Part of redefining the joy in the journey comes from recognizing that she's been so tied to the outcome of her work rather than living in the moment. The revelation that her life is bigger than landing in Billboard Top 100 came from grappling with the mortality of both of her parents. While the world saw Normani setting out on a successful solo endeavor, her mother and father privately began cancer treatments, as I just stated a few minutes ago. Okay. Just trying to see if there's anything additional that needs to be addressed from the Normani interview before I conclude this. So let's just say, um, boom, 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 boom. Uh, every challenge Normani has overcome has ensured her conviction in paving her own path. She says, I know what it feels like to be in a position to put out records that I don't believe in. I made a vow to myself. If God gives me the second opportunity, I'm going to do things my way. She further explains, I want to be able to sleep at night knowing that I put out my absolute best work. Despite what the world says about it, I put out something that I love and stand behind, especially because it's taken so long. It's not to say that Normani regrets her past work. It's just that the way she views the world now is different. And from her perspective, that's a good thing. She says, I've come to understand that my best today isn't going to be my best a year from now, and that's okay. I have to allow myself opportunity and room to grow. I never want to feel like I've reached a point where I've got it all figured out, especially creatively. Okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. She says that she's in a season of freedom. Being accountable for the moment she finds herself in has been the biggest marker of her maturity, and it's one that she owns with her whole heart. She says there's some... Regret in realizing that the only person that has the power to stop you from becoming all that you're intended to be is yourself. In some ways, doubt has influenced not just how she moves through the world, but also how she processes her success. She says, I've missed out on so many of my moments because of doubt. I've been unable to celebrate my wins because I genuinely believed at the time that the goodness that's coming to me was too good to be true. Not just as a woman, but as a black woman. Not just in the industry, but in life. I've always felt my back has been up against the wall. I'm always fighting. So when something good happens, it's hard for me to live in the moment. I'm always wondering, okay, at what point is this going to take a turn? Her feelings represent what so many black women face as they try to navigate their lives with trauma. It distorts everything from one sense of self to the ability to be present in the moment. With time, Normani has found ways to move past doubt first by honoring every aspect of her journey. She says, I've had to grant myself forgiveness for either not making changes quicker in certain areas or not acting sooner on certain things. I've had to acknowledge that I did the best that I could possibly at the time. Okay. 
Now, last month, Normani did make her Sundance Film Festival debut in the anthology horror thriller comedy Freaky Tales alongside heavy hitters like Pedro Pascal, Dominique Thorne, and Jay Ellis. It's a big step for the star, especially since her only time in the acting arena has been voicing an animated character in the Disney's The Proud, the Proud Family Louder and Prouder series and starring in her own music videos. When probed about what it means for her to take this next step, her eyes light up and it's clear that she stepped into an era in life where she feels free to explore. She says, I see the transformation that acting has helped me to achieve. It's pushed my ability to really dive inward. It really forced me to be vulnerable in a way that's different from music. Acting has been therapeutic for Normani, proving to her that she can take risks and succeed at them. She says it forced me to accept those parts of myself that maybe I would initially think of as flaws, but are actually labeled as beautiful and essential toward getting the story across. So we're going to be seeing more of Normani on the actual silver screen acting. So that's something that y'all can expect as well as Normani fans. So she's going to have new music dropping. She's got new films dropping. And hopefully with this, she's not forced to go back into the trenches or go back into the shadows. Hopefully she's able to just keep moving forward, stay on her path and continue, excuse me, to shine her light. Um, and before I go, I do think she split ways with her management. Yeah. So last year, Normani parted ways with longtime manager Brandon Silverstein. She has now signed on with the management team that's behind Charlie XCX, Troy Sivan, Coco Jones, and more. Um, so I just wanted to point that out because Brandon Silverstein was recently caught up in a, a controversy just a couple months ago where he was screaming on an artist and um, talking about all the money that he had, I guess, had invested and wrapped up into the artist that no longer wanted to work with him. The artist was actually contemplating retiring from music. There was a Zoom call that leaked out and he was cursing out this artist and his his family and team. Um, but Normani now has a new management and new music on the way, as we know. So she's now being managed by Brandon Creed and Lydia Asrat after splitting from S10 Entertainment's Brandon Silverstein in May. Okay, with new music on the horizon and a strat and creed now at the helm of her musical career, she and the rest of her team are extremely excited to embark on this new chapter and partnership. Okay, so this was just a few months ago that this information was released out there. She just got new management last year. And it seems that Brandon Silverstein might have been one of the one of the additional holdups because I find it interesting that she fires him, gets with new management, and all of a sudden they started gearing up for new music almost immediately. Of course, with in tandem with whatever her parents were going through with their cancer diagnosis and stuff like that, her trying to be there for them. Israt also manages, uh, they say, Nomani's team told the news outlet she wishes Silverstein all the best. Israt also manages Coco Jones under her own company, uh, uh, 10Q Management. In 2022, she was included in Forbes 30 Under 30 list and, uh, and has also managed, uh, co-managed Doja Cat from 2017 up to, to up until March 2022. On his end, Creed manages artists such as Charlie XEX and Troy Sivan. He recently launched his own management company, Good World Management. Okay. Not only did Normani leave S10 Entertainment, but another artist by the name of Anita, a Spanish artist, she also parted ways with the company and signed with Republic Records in June of last year. So it seems that this dude was holding back quite a few of his clients and everybody that's in his stable has now gone on to other places. OK, so that definitely needed to be noted because so many people were trying to understand why Normani was being held back. I don't think it was just RCA. Brandon Silverstein may have had a contentious relationship with RCA and maybe that also caused some sort of rift between her and the label. Whatever it is, he's out. She's still on RCA and her long awaited album will be out allegedly sometime this year. Now, if it doesn't drop, I'm going to be making another video and I'm going to slam the fuck out of RCA because we already talked about the RCA curse as it pertains to Normani, as it pertains to other artists that have gone through some checkered past with RCA. Don't make me like to chop on y'all ass. Put that shit out. Put the music videos out. Get her shit on radio. Don't play with it, man. She been out here five going on six goddamn years ready to put a debut album out in the public eye. That shit is embarrassing, man. Get y'all shit together. 
Let me know what y'all think of all this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates, and I will see y'all on the next one. I'm going to take y'all out with Let's Get It. I hope y'all enjoy y'all evening. Much love and respect once again, y'all. Peace! King of my city in cul de sac. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef for computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully oppressed. I was ready for years and they died of me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my mind, I came back with some batteries. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner. Packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble. I done came too far to be humble.